Hello! For the past two weeks, I've been participating in the first ever Ace Rolla Game Jam. It was a two week long game jam with the theme of aberration. What's that? A deviation in the normal structure or number of chromosomes in an organism. A defect in a lens or mirror that prevents light rays from being focused at a single point and results in a distorted or blurred image. Uh, this is a very strange theme, I feel like, for a game jam. Maybe I just don't have enough context for other game jam themes, but um, this one felt somehow restrictive, but also vague at the same time. But maybe I would have thought that about any theme, honestly. Maybe that's just the structure of a theme that makes it feel like that. I have never done a full game jam before, so I was really excited to try this out, but I figured that a two week long game jam would be a better introductory game jam for me than doing something shorter. And uh, I really like Ace Rolla's YouTube channel, so I figured I would, I would participate. If you're watching this video now, you can go to the link in the description and, uh, and play some of the games and rate them and give my game five stars. Uh, but if you're watching this video in the future, that's just tough cheese. So first off, what did I end up making? I made OptiGolf. In OptiGolf, you play as a little photon who's trying to get into a wormhole. Basically, like golf. Um, but you have to steer around these atoms. But you are a photon after all. So if you want to quantum tunnel through the atom, you can. Uh, if you quantum tunnel through an atom, it'll split you up into different wavelengths. And then you can bounce those wavelengths into each other to mix the colors. You have to get the right color into the wormhole, or else you risk having high chromatic aberration. You know what that. You also want to try and keep your par down, because this is golf after all. But I'm going to go back to the very beginning and go through all of my previous code and, uh, and see how it progressed. Day one. So it's day one of Game Jam, and I'm ready to get started. I worked an opening shift at the coffee shop I work at, and then I ate lunch, and then I dilly-dallied around for a little bit, and now it's 2.30 and I'm ready to get started. This morning before work, I made just a tiny little stab at it. I just got a window open and then a ball to move wherever you click. I've been thinking about the theme of the game jam, and I had a couple ideas. I thought maybe something to do with like, like a horror game where you're in the back rooms and you have a mirror and as you're walking around you have to refract the mirror at different angles to see like the way forward or to see if there are like aberrant monsters somewhere hiding in the back rooms. Um, I also had an idea sort of like the game Connections uh, where you would be given like a group of a set of things and then you had to find the thing that was different about one of the things or different about all of them. Um, but that would require a lot of bespoke, um, like puzzle work. And I'm don't know how good I am at making puzzles yet. So I ended up deciding to go with what I have been cooking on all, <coughs> what I've been cooking on all morning is OptiGolf. See, chromatic aberration is when light hits a prism and then comes out uh, where some wavelengths of light come out at a harsher angle than other wavelengths of light, which creates a spectrum, which is the rainbow. I was thinking it would be fun to make a golf game where you play as a beam of light that goes through different prisms trying to get into a specific color hole. And when two beams interact, uh, they would add their colors together. All right, this is the first save file on the 29th. So this was the day after the theme was announced. This was at 7.02 in the morning. I was trying to get a little bit of work in before my opening shift. Um, and this is mostly just, uh, you know, basic Pi game. Oh, so I wrote it in Pi game. I have a little bit of experience with Pi game more so than I have with like an actual game engine like Godot. So I figured I could get a very simple game going with Pi game and then I'd be restricted design wise to what I can do. Um, but I like a little bit of design restriction. I think it makes for interesting choices. Uh, let's see what we got going. Oh, oh. <laughs> so looks like uh, it crashes. Um, Pi game not responding. <laughs> really got some good work done. So basically what I wanted to do was I wanted the ball to be able to split up and 
create more balls and have sort of an updating list of how many balls are bouncing around, but obviously there's an issue. Uh, I don't remember what I ended up doing to fix that, but a huge mistake I can recognize now retrospectively is that I wasted a lot of time trying to make my own physics uh, at the beginning when I should have just used a library from the beginning. I ended up using PyMonk, which integrates really well with PyGame. Uh, and it's pretty simple, but also pretty uh, pretty effective, I would say, at what I needed it to do at least. But here I was just trying to do it all myself because I thought, you know what? It's some circles bouncing around in a rectangle. How difficult could it be? Too difficult. Yeah. Uh, I don't understand the difference between extend and append uh, in Python, uh, and I probably never will. Day two, electric boogaloo. Hey, just got home from work. I opened this morning, so the time is almost two. I got a little bit of work in over my lunch break, but uh, I'm hoping to hit it hard this afternoon. I'm gonna do some calisthenics, then hit the pen, then hit the code. <sighs> Yesterday was all right. I got all of my plans done, but I don't have a larger plan, so I don't know if that was like super productive or um or if i might be a little bit behind but basically i got it so that uh the ball can hit the edge of the level and then you know split up into multiple other balls so now there's a lot of edge cases that i have to work through like what if they're intersecting uh level geometry or I, handling collision is a lot more difficult than i gave it credit for because i've done it before but only with like mouse clicks, which is a very simple one call process. Whereas this is like a continuous collision detection, um, which gets a lot more complicated actually, which who could have seen that coming? It would be more complicated than I would think it would be. That's impossible. So today I'd like to work on keeping streaks of lines visible from where the ball has been previously. And then also I'd like to tackle figuring out when one line crosses another line, um, just figuring out how exactly to how exactly to detect when that happens and what to do when it happens. I have an idea in my head. I want the colors to like mix once that happens, but we'll see. I thought of a solution earlier today for a problem I've been having with the level where I want I want the level to be semi procedurally generated, so kind of random shapes for the golf course um, and then random placement of objects within those shapes. So figuring out uh, a how to draw all those shapes so that it's one blob instead of a bunch of shapes overlapping on top of each other. And also I need to figure out the basic logic of how I'm going to randomly drop these shapes onto the board so that they create a, you know, a solvable golf course. Um, so yeah. All right, this is on the first. Let's see what we got. Oh, it looks like I've got balls splitting up into different colors and interacting with walls within the course. Very nice. You cannot tell how completely bug riddled <laughs> it was and how tenuously this entire system is built. Um, but I mean, we probably will see in the next couple builds, but it's looking pretty good so far. I've got a, a ball class and then a, a, a level class. The level class ended up being a huge mistake because way too late I realized that instead of a level class, I need a wall uh, and then I need another larger class to handle, you know, like the playing field and the ball and all the walls. But instead, I just had the walls and all of that mixed together in one class, and it got super, super confusing. This was later that same day. I still don't have any like interaction, but... Huh. I don't know what I was trying to do here. I think... I don't know why I made the frame rate so slow. Oh, it's because I was trying, I was still set on the idea of having like beams that overlap be the color mixing principle, but I ended up just going with just balls colliding. 
uh, because the beams filled up the board like really quickly and it became almost impossible to do anything without crossing like six lines at once and then it was hard to predict what was going to happen. Um, and also I was having so much trouble trying to keep track of where the balls were colliding and the lines that would be created like after them, the trails. Uh, it was uh, just turning into a nightmare because... I couldn't keep each ball's separate trajectory history separate from each other. They were all, like, mixing up in uh, in one big pool, which was impossible to compute. Uh, as you can see, I still don't have collision between uh, balls themselves. I just have collision between walls and balls, and I really wanted the balls to be able to collide with each other. Turns out this is so difficult to do, so I ended up using PyMonk for that specifically. And then I, once I figured out how to use PyMonk, I used it for a lot of other things too. Day three, Prisoner of Azkaban. All right, where where was I at on the second? What was I doing? Oh, oh, -ho! so now I've got hitting the. <laughs> immediately break it okay it's, sometimes it's bouncing off the walls um the friction is way too high and also it's bouncing like all the way inside of objects um which i was figuring out but i also had this thingy which didn't end up in the final game well it sort of did uh this is a prism so oh so what's supposed to happen when you go through it is um it's supposed to shoot a bunch of different colored balls. What's supposed to happen when you go through is your, your ball is supposed to split up into multiple different colored balls. Uh, and it, you're supposed to retain like the momentum and all that to keep the physics consistent. But it looks like they're just shooting out like really quickly, which is hilarious. And also not interacting with each other. Boring. Where is the emergent gameplay from this? Day four, and then day five. Getting loosey-goosey. This is the third. Let's see. Oh. Aha. So now we have... Uh, uh, I don't know if you just saw, but I ran it, and because of a random value, it crashed, basically, which you never want to happen. Um, but also, none of the collisions are working. Uh but they're only working in the horizontal axis, but they're working inside some of the... It's only working, like, 10% of the time, um, which is a huge issue. I was trying to make... Oh, that's kind of cool, actually. That's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, I was trying to make... A procedurally generated uh, level layout so that way I could have like multiple of these boxes randomly on top of each other and then um, and then make the levels like that so that way you could just make an infinite number of levels um, and I was still definitely married to this idea at this point but it ended up being not so great of an idea because I couldn't make the randomly generated levels uh, functional um, uh, much, you know, like a human designer would be able to make a functional level that you can finish no matter what. This is later on the third. See if I made any progress. Oh. I have no idea what's going on here. <laughs> it's just randomly generating at the top, and there's also no geometry, and this prism is randomly in the middle. That stayed there for a very long time. It'll be here for the next, like, four days probably. This is on the fourth. Uh, the same problem. Don't know what's going on with this ball. Or anything. I'm definitely working backwards at this point. Day six, colon. Ooh, okay. I think this is when I incorporated a pie monk for the first time. Is it? Yes, it is. So immediately you can see <laughs> all of a sudden the collisions are working and uh, it's so much better. I got a circular uh, level geometry. I got things bouncing off the level geometry in a way that makes sense. 
um, the color combinations are still not working. That took me a very long time to get that right. All right, so now we're gonna talk about color theory. Um, normally when it comes to programming, we're thinking about colors in terms of RGB values. That's red, green, and blue. How much red there is in a pixel, how much green there is in a pixel, and how much blue there is in a pixel. And when you add red and green together, you get yellow. When you add blue and green together, you get cyan. When you add red and blue together, you get magenta. And then when you add all three together, you get white. And when you add none together, you get black. Um, this is pretty iconic and it makes a lot of sense if you think about it. But um, there is another alternative theory of how to mathematically represent color that I ended up using for OptiGolf that I like because this uh, runs into some problems actually. So the theory that I like is um, HSB, hue, saturation, and brightness. So basically you can think about color as a wheel. You may have seen a color wheel before um, where it kind of folds back over itself modulo style because magenta slash pink um, really reconnects with red as much as red connects to orange. Um, but when you think about RGB, you don't really necessarily get this nice modulo effect. Hue means the angle of the color on this wheel that we're on. So uh, <coughs> green is an opposite angle of pink, and red is an opposite angle of this halfway between turquoise and blue. Saturation is how far out on the wheel it is. So full saturation is all the way orange, where like 50% saturation is like peach. It's kind of halfway through here. It's halfway between gray, which is no saturation, and, you know, the fully saturated color. You could say that turquoise is negative 50% saturated red, you know, if you think about it a certain way. And then the last letter in HSB is brightness, which basically means, like, how much white or black you add to the color. Um, I only care about hue, the angle that it's on. So when two balls in OptiGolf collide, say you've got a blue ball and a pink ball, I find the average between those two on this wheel, and then I set the color to that. So you would get a purple ball. This isn't really perfect, and it isn't always like 100% intuitive, but it's intuitive enough that I'm pretty proud of it. Um, so for instance, when you add yellow and blue together, if you actually did that with real pigments, you would get green. Because they're exactly inverse angles of each other, you actually get pink this time around because it favors one side of the circle when it should be favoring the other. And I should probably go back in a future update and, uh, and iron out some of those details. But as it stands, I did a lot of fussing with the color mixing system. So basically I have a function that takes the RGB value of the ball, turns it into HSB. Then I find the average of the two ball's colors. And then I set them both to that, and then I turn it from HSB back into RGB so I can actually set the color in the program. This way you get all the balls being fully saturated. Before, if you added um, a red ball and a green ball, if you just added up the averages of the RGB values, you would get a half saturated yellow. When I want a fully saturated yellow, if you're really interested in this kind of stuff, I got this specific color wheel from the color nerd on TikTok. You should go follow him. He has some really, really interesting stuff. But you know, I am making multicolored balls and they're very pretty. Uh, so that's all I care about. Um, this is a huge step forward, I feel like, from the fourth to the fifth. But I got a lot of work in that day, so. Day seven. Here is where it all falls apart. So. We are one week in to a two-week game jam. We're exactly halfway through, and I am definitely not halfway done. I have a lot of work to do. Luckily, I have a lot of time today to be able to get all of that work done. So we'll see how I'm feeling after today, but I've got uh, most of the basics of the physics engine uh, put together, most of the basics of everything else in my head, and that should be the easy part. That's always, you know, everything you haven't done yet, it should be the easy part. <laughs> so, uh, I'm gonna get to work. Now on to the sixth. Uh, 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 no such file or directory. Was I really already working on 
levels at this point. Oh, okay. So this is my cursed um, first attempt at a level editor. And uh, it was terrible. So I think I'm going to have to not, because I don't know where I have a levels.txt. Maybe I have one around here somewhere that would fit with this. I got something. Nice. Okay, as you can see, I am stuck. But, um, ooh, I've got balls. And then also I incorporated holes. This is when the holes came in. Um, you can very easily get stuck outside the level. In fact, I, when on load, you are stuck outside the level, <laughs> which is really funny. So you have to work your way out of there. But you can collide with multiple things. Ooh. And also, you get this hole that kind of sucks you into its gravitational orbit. This is a update after a couple hours of work. I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place right now because I've already sunk so much time into the logic of how the golf course procedural generation works, and I'm still not very happy with it. And I'm kind of thinking that I would rather just design my own levels by hand. So I could sink a bunch of time making the tools to create a level editor and then sink more time into making the actual levels themselves and then have a finite number of levels or i could keep fussing around with the procedural generation and have it be you know have less of a human touch to the design um and it's gonna waste a lot of time either way so i'll be ruminating on that date i eat okay so this is when i had the idea to have you be able to uh, merge to quantum tunnel through the level geometry. Eventually, I came to call the level geometry um, atoms, but I didn't have that idea quite yet. But I wanted you to be able to, if you hit an atom with enough force, to be able to knock yourself into the atom. Uh, and then I expounded on this later. This was like... This was over a week into the... This was one week into the game jam, and I was adding, like, core elements of gameplay. So uh, the planning was incredible. The planning was immaculate. <laughs> and you'll see I was changing the game, the fundamental gameplay concepts, right up until the last second. Uh, but obviously I don't have it working yet because I just broke all collision. Well, day 9, 7, 8, day nine. 9. I'm at my lowest point right now. I have no idea if I'm going to finish it on time. I just spent the last uh, two hours at work when I should have been working, doing barista duties, just sitting and working on the game, and uh, I didn't get any closer. Uh, I made the level system for moving from level to level and for creating levels a little bit too complicated, and now it's just this giant knot. And every time I change one thing, it... Uh, affects three different areas in ways that I didn't expect. So I'd like to do, I'd like to simplify all of that down, but then I have, you know, I have to make all the levels, I have to do the sounds, I have to do any sort of play testing. I haven't gotten any of that done. Um, it's just a mess right now. I have no idea if I'm gonna finish it on time, but I will finish it on time. If I say that I'll finish it on time, then I probably will. Um, but it might be shit, so who knows? Ooh, I got the color blindness mode. Also, I got the friction right, I feel like, for the first time. That's just more satisfying. But I got a little debug menu telling me something about the colors. Oh, oh, and I got a, uh, okay, this is the beginnings of a level editor so that I could make all of the levels because I decided I didn't want to do randomly generated levels. Um, I wanted to be able to make my own, so I, oops. That is still not working, but um, that'll come in later. So at this point, I think I was probably working on the uh, color mixing properties. So I wanted, uh, when two balls collided, for their colors to average out. Um, and originally, it was your speed was also going to determine like how much color mixing happened, but uh, I ended up make simplifying it because it was too hard to like see. 
but basically whatever the average of the two colors modulo one in this case because it's a floating point number would be what the two colors what the two balls leaving the collision would be but i still hadn't gotten it right so for instance nine and well nine and three turns into one i wanted it to have a little bit of intuition so like what happens when you mix red and blue it should come out to be purple right no you get green <laughs> instead so i still hadn't i still hadn't figured out uh the exact uh way that i wanted it to work yet and this system ended up really favoring uh green as you can see the more balls you knock around everything just averages out to green and i kept having this trouble where like one color would be uh, you know, super pref super preferred by the system, and it was really obvious the more you knocked balls around how, like, all of them were adding up to the same color. Now everything's green. I didn't want that. That's not the kind of emergent gameplay that I was trying to create. As you can see, I was reaching so many, uh, I was reaching so many walls with this level editor system that I had set up, and I stuck around with it for way too long. I think it was the next day when I finally took it out. This is when I started adding sounds. So I wanted to make sure. Boss. <laughs> oh, let's hear that again. Boss. Boss. That's from uh, Better Call Saul. I still haven't gotten the wall drawing in yet. I don't know when that was added, but basically you should be able to, the idea was that you could draw in walls. Day 10, home stretch. Ah, we've got... <gasps> My favorite part is the little sounds. Um, I was super happy of a uh, click here. Um, I thought that this would be a really good introduction to the mechanics of the game. Um, some people had trouble with this because they like they clicked it and then nothing happened, but you got to click and drag. I was hoping that that would be like something you could discover and it wouldn't be too stressful, but some people had difficulty with that. And that's like minor tweaks with stuff that I obviously should have been had someone play testing the game so I could make those adjustments, but of course I didn't until the I <laughs> had my girlfriend play test it. Humble brag, I have a girlfriend. I had my girlfriend play test it uh after i had already uploaded it so it was too <laughs> late no matter what but anyhow <laughs> sometimes uh you just end up typing random words for like tests this is so that i could get text on the screen and also it looks like i've got drawing in the walls finally oh yes when you go through the wall, you get assigned a random color. And uh, let's see if I got the color mechanics working well enough. Yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with this. But obviously there's some issues with the sound. And then it also breaks. But it's really starting to come together. In between the ninth and the 10th, I do not have any saves. I was kind of in a state of delirium at this point, and uh, I just stopped uh, doing unique saves, um, but I should have been saving. So here's how I made the music for this game. I was really inspired by a lot of ambient pieces I had been listening to while I was working on Optigolf. I think that ambient vibe can be felt in the whole game, and I wanted the music to reflect that. So I started with this chord progression that was inspired by uh, Arabesque by Debussy. Specifically was inspired by this one video uh, by Algo Motion that is Bogo Sort Shreds on Arabesque Number 1. I was really inspired by that. And originally I was going to use a sample of it, but I decided that I just ended up making it myself. Um, so it's a pretty simple chord progression, just... Yeah, hashtag hashtag mag sus seven. Mag seven. <laughs> so I set that up on a piano and then i had uh, a couple arpeggiators running simultaneously and then i had it running through a couple different delays reverbs and then this uh audi audiomatic uh tape this audiomatic tape filter and that kind of sounds like this Which is already giving me some really nice ambience, but I wanted to add just a little bit more texture to it. So I included this uh, log tone. It's the exact same MIDI, but with different arpeggiators, which gives you kind of a interesting, which gives you an, a nice harmonic effect. But 
got it set to 164 repeat and random. So you get this interesting, it kind of reminds me of like a tabla, the way they play tabla drums in Carnatic music. I'm not sure if this is at all a good approximation, but that's just what it sounds like to my Western ear. But I like that jittery type of texture. And then uh, that wasn't quite enough for me, so I decided to add in still the exact same MIDI. Um, this thing called a super dulcimer, which is basically just a carpless strong... I mean, it sounds like a dulcimer. But again, different arpeggiator settings. And this really reminds me of uh, the theme from House. It has a similar type of dulcimer. And this is all semi-random, so I took a sample of that, and then I did it over here because I was feeling really messy. I just muted all these other channels. I uh, I put down a sample, which is about a minute long, and then I took the end of the sample and I added it here at the beginning, and I had it so that they cross, I had it so that they cross fade into each other, and then I cut out at the beginning of where that ending the beginning of where I took the ending from, if that makes sense. So that way it forms a perfect circle. And then listen at the end. And you don't even notice where the loop point is. I was pretty proud of that. <laughs> I was I was way too proud of that seamless loop. It was gorgeous. Seamless ambient loop. It just goes on and on forever while you're playing the game. Day 11 through 13. I stopped counting. Oh, ho, ho. So what happened later on the 11th? <gasps> I got music. Boom. This is when the game really started to get together. I got options. I got the color blindness mode. Bing. But I had no levels, which was an issue. I really procrastinating making levels until the last, absolute last possible second. Um, don't do that. Um, I should have been making levels from the beginning, basically. I should have had some levels in mind, but I ended up waiting until, like, the last day, the last two days, the last 48 hours to make all of the levels. Day 14, the dreaded day upon us. It is done. I worked so, so much during the last 48 hours, and, um, I have a lot less levels than I assumed I would, um you know, a week ago. Um, but I do have a finished game. And I'm proud of that, you know? It's my first game jam I've ever done, so I'm pretty happy with it. I just have to do some of the some of the visual design to make the itch.io page look pretty and upload it, but other than that, I'm so ready to play all of the other games, uh, all the other game, all of the other submissions for the game jam. Um, I'm really excited. I've played a couple so far, but I didn't want to get distracted, so now is the time to do that. I learned so much during this game jam about um, how to make a level editor, how to work with JSON files, how to work with uh, a physics library to do the physics collisions and um, velocity and stuff like that. Uh, it's a lot more complicated than I gave it credit for. I thought I could whip it out like in a couple days, but it ended up costing me about a week to get the physics just right. Uh, a week that I could have saved if I had just used a library at the beginning, but I am pretty well versed in PyMonk now and I'm able to make it do what I want it to do. Um, so I'll have that in the future that I won't have to waste so much time. And same with the level editor, I got like hot reloading so I can mess with the JSON file in one window and then hot reload it in the game without restarting it, which is really nice. Um, that was a lot easier to do than I expected. But working with the JSON file itself was really complicated. JSON is, it's its own thing. Once you know how it works, it's pretty simple, but um, but it, there is a learning curve to it for sure. But I'd say I learned a lot. I might do another game jam, who knows? This one was really fun. I can't wait to see what everyone else made. So that was the story of my first ever game jam. Thanks for watching. Um, 
Once again, go and check out my itch.io page if you want to play the game or if you want to look at the other submissions to the Game Jam. There is just shy of a thousand of them, so there's a lot of games to try out and play. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, you know all the stuff you gotta do. All right, bye.